and I'm here today with Matthew Pearson, co-founder and uh, CEO of Airspeeder. Hi, Matthew. Thanks for having me, Nissa. Thank you. Would you please introduce yourself? Yes, I'm uh, Matt Pearson, uh, founder and CEO of Alauda and Airspeeder. Um, we're building flying electric racing cars and racing them. Okay, that sounds magical. Can you please tell us about the technology behind Airspeeder and, and Alauda? Sure. So we're building uh, electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. So big multi-copters. Um, they're about four meters long. Uh, they're made out of carbon fiber and they have a really sophisticated collision avoidance system to keep the pilots safe. We're focused on racing to make them go as fast as possible, as safely as possible, um, and to commercialize the technology first. Um, the, like the car industry, when we moved from the horse to the car, the, the real focus was, the first application was racing. Um, and because no one had ever seen these things before, um, and so the first car races happened in the late 1880s, um, just a, a few kind of steam-powered cars trundling across France at a top speed of about 12 miles an hour, but it captured everyone's imagination. And, uh, and that was the birth of the industry. And I always say Henry Ford was a racing driver, Marcel Renault was a racing driver, um, Charles Rolls was a racing driver. All the, the great automotive companies started as racing companies. Um, and so ultimately we want to build a mass market vehicle, um, but we're starting with a racing car. Amazing. So Airspeeder are defining itself as part of the mobility revolution. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, Airspeeder is the world's first electric flying car racing series. And the, um, we see this as underpinning this new mobility revolution. Our cities are going to change. The way we get around is going to change. Um, but learning how these vehicles are going to operate in close proximity at high speed with, uh, with humans in them and controlling them um, racing really underpins all of those learnings. So, um, and I think the biggest thing for our industry in eVTOL is um, there's a lot of hype, but no one's really telling the story to consumers. You know, we, uh, the people of the world kind of, everyone's excited about flying cars, but everyone kind of feels like, well, they're always 10, 20 years away. Um, so it's important for us to, to show them that they are here now. They're really exciting. Uh, these are the types of vehicles you want to have. Kids should have posters of these on their walls, that kind of thing. Um, and that's how I think that, that acceptance and adoption drives the, the mobility revolution. People need to want these things. Acronis is your partner. How are they supporting the technology? Acronis, one of the biggest things that we, um, we struggle with is the amount of data we generate um, every time we test a vehicle. So we, we are now flight testing three or four times a week, all day long, um, multiple vehicles simultaneously. Um, each vehicle has uh, 12 cameras, um, uh, the collision avoidance system, the radar system, all of that um, is generating huge amounts of data that we need to capture in real time and, and then store securely. And then we have a distributed team around the world as well. So one of the, the challenges is how do, how do we make sure that they can securely access all that data um, wherever they're working, in every time zone, um, and, uh, and just have a seamless experience really working. Um, so Acronis has been helping us hugely with, with that, that aspect of managing our data securely, getting it around the world, um, and, uh, yeah, and handling the enormous amount of data that we're generating. So women are underrepresented in the tech industry. And I would say also in the racing, car racing industry. So sure. how um, are you making sure that it's not happening uh, through your own journey? We're, we're really conscious of that. We're, we want to build a, um, a diverse and inclusive sport. We're trying to build the sport of the 21st century. Flying cars really represent that kind of pinnacle of, of motorsport. And we think that's, um, that's really exciting. So it's an exciting opportunity to do things and set the groundwork for a, a really inclusive sport. Um, we have uh, a whole cohort of female engineers on the team, um, and, uh, and you can see them working away in, uh, at the, the factory in South Australia, um, and, uh, and involved in design and manufacture of the vehicle and test. Um, and then we, we have uh, female pilots on staff as well. So you'll be seeing, a, a, I think, a, a more gender diverse um, cohort of pilots when we announce our um, pilot academy early next year. 
um, that's really exciting as well. It's really important to us to, to make sure that we're starting out in the right way. And what are the XR racing plans for 2022 when you stop in Dubai? Well, um, we haven't announced where we're going to be racing yet, but uh, we will be racing in 2022. Um, it'll be three races, um, likely to be four teams, but ultimately we want a full, full field of 10 teams, um, maybe in the second or third season. Um, but yeah, 2022 in June, we should start racing. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew, and good luck for your venture. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.